In this video, we're going to be covering how you can create a command line interface with argpass in Python. And we're just going to be covering the basics so you can get started. And later on, on this channel, I will be showing you how to create more complex programs, of course. But to get started, it's important we grasp the basics. So a good example of a command line interface would be pip itself. As you can see here, we can type in pip and we can give it some sort of command or some sort of flag. So right now we're just asking for help and it's going to give us all this information, the commands we can use with it, the usage, and of course the options that we can provide with it. So I'm going to be showing you the basics of how you can get started with creating this kind of command line interface. So the first thing we have to do is import from argpass the argument parser and the namespace. And here we're going to create our very first basic command line interface. So the first thing we have to do is create a parser. And this is going to be an argument parser that we have to instantiate. Now with this parser, we can start adding some arguments so that the user can interact with our script. So here we'll type in parser.addArgument and the argument we're going to create is going to be called echo. And we're going to provide some help so the user will know what it does. And this is going to be echoes the given string. Now by adding an argument, we are creating a namespace for that argument. So now we have a variable called echo as soon as we run our command line. But once we have that argument, it's also important that we have a way of retrieving it. So to do this, we're going to create some arguments and I'm just going to use the namespace type just to make it a bit more explicit that we're creating a namespace there. And we're going to type in parser.parseargs. Now it's not necessary that you include this. This is something I do for my own specific reasons. I like using types in certain situations. And for me, this just seems a bit more explicit than just providing args, because now I know this is a namespace variable. But what it does essentially is take the arguments we've created here and make them usable for us later down here. So for example, we can print args.echo. As you can see, we haven't really defined the variable echo anywhere in our script. And usually that would give us a name error. But in this situation, we have this special line of code here that created a namespace for this echo variable so that we could use it later. Now, if we run this program, it's not going to work because this is usually not how you run a command line interface. Usually you would want to open up the terminal and I'm going to clear all of this, so clear. And inside here, you would do something more like Python main.py because that is the file I'm currently in, followed by the argument. So here we can say hello. And if we type that, it's going to echo hello. It's going to retrieve this variable and it's going to put it in the namespace so that we can use it later. And that was our first command line interface. And that was a very simple example. So let's continue with making this a bit more complex. Now let's say we want to make this program a bit more interesting. We want to get a number and we want to square it for the user. We're going to change this to square and we're going to change this to squares a given number. And we're also going to specify a type for it. We're going to say that this should be an integer or it shouldn't be accepted. Now the rest can stay the same except with the print statement, we're going to type in args.square because we've changed this to square now and we want to square that number. Now if we run the script again, you'll see that if we try to run it with hello, it's going to say that we have an invalid int value. To make this actually work, we need to type in python main.py followed by the number that we want to square. That's the argument that we want to provide. So that will give us 100 back as a result. So far, so good. We have a very simple command line interface that allows the user to square the number. But let's make it a bit more advanced by adding some positional arguments and positional arguments are optional. So it's going to give the user some extra options with the code that we're providing in case they want to use those options. For example, we're going to type in parser.addArgument and here we're going to type in the optional argument and we're going to add a short version and a long version. And for the longer version, you want to use two dashes and that's what defines it to be positional. So here we're going to type in verbose and the help here is going to be provides a verbose description. And we're also going to provide an action. 
So here we'll type in action and we're going to store true. So now if we add this to the command in the command line, it's going to store the Boolean of true, which means we can use that as a flag. If we don't use this, it's going to remain false. But if we do, we're going to be able to use it as a true value. And let me show you right away how we can use it. So now we have the arguments as always, but here we can check if args dot verbose, then we can do the following print. And I'm going to paste in this string that just gives a verbose description of the operation that we are performing. Else we're just going to do what we already did. And that is square the number normally. So let's test this program out. Now we have Python main dot pi 10. If we run that, it's still going to square 10 for us, which is going to be 100. But we can actually now make it verbose, we can type in dash v. And it's going to say 10 squared is 100. And I also want to specify that the argument order does not matter, you can do verbose first, and then you can square something, the order just does not matter. And finally, we can type in maybe let's square two, for example, and let's add verbose with the double dash approach. And it's going to give us the same result. So you can decide to use the short version, or you can decide to use the long version. That's exactly what we defined up here. And once again, if you don't provide any of the positional arguments, the program will still run fine because this is positional, unless you want the user to define it. And in that case, you would have to type in required and set it to true. Now, instead of storing a value such as true, we can also provide some choices. I mean, we can retrieve a value just as we did with square and use those values to make our program act accordingly. So instead of action, I'm going to change the program just slightly. And I'm going to make sure that the input value is, a, is of type integer. And I'm going to provide some choices. So here the choices for the user will be 0, 1 and 2. So these are the only choices that the user should be using with this positional argument. Now because this code is actually really straightforward, I'm just going to paste it in and explain it. So what I just pasted in is a simple check that looks for the value that we've inserted with verbose, and it acts accordingly. So if we add a zero to verbose, it's going to print option one, otherwise, it's going to print option two. And finally, it might print option three, depending on these options. So let's run the program and see how it works with the new choices that we've added. So here, we have Python main, we have two, and we're going to try to run it without any choices. So we're just going to put dash v. And it's not going to allow us to do that because it expects one argument. But now if we do it with an argument, we can say zero, for example, and it's going to pick option one for us. So we were able to add some extra input to our program to make it act a bit different. And if we do this with a number that's not in the choice list right here, that says zero, one, two, you'll see that it's not going to run because it's going to say error, argument, verbose, invalid choice, four. And it will help us with choosing from zero, one, and two. Now at any point in the command line, you can always do dash H for help. And you'll see the variables that you've provided along with the descriptions that you've provided for them. So in general, it's a good idea to provide a descriptive help message. Otherwise, the users might be a bit lost. Now there's actually one more thing I'm going to show you before we move on to creating our very first basic command line interface. And to do this, we're going to remove this section over here and modify the code as follows. So the next thing I wanted to show you is that we can actually add a default value to our arguments. So if we don't insert anything, it's not going to give us that error that we're missing an argument, because now we have a default argument that is inserted automatically. And also for the positional arguments, I'm going to show you another cool feature that we can use with it. Because right now we only used one V. But what happens if we use two V's or three V's? How can we actually turn that into a piece of functionality? So to do this, we're going to modify the help description a bit. So we're going to call this verbose description. And we're going to say use double V for extra verbose. And we're going to provide a special action, which is called count. And what count does is count the occurrences of the V so that we can act upon it accordingly. Now, as always, we have our arguments here in this namespace, and we want the result of type integer to equal args.square 
to the second power. Now here is where it becomes interesting. We can type in if args dot verbose is equal to one, then we will print the following verbose message. So the result is result. L if args dot verbose is equal to two, we'll print the second verbose message, which is even more descriptive than the previous one. Else we're just going to print the regular message. So print result. And actually for the default argument to work, we do need to provide one more keyword argument, and this is the n args. So this is asking for how many arguments is it looking for? The question mark denotes that it's only looking for one argument because sometimes you can pass in multiple arguments. So this actually tells you how many it should look for. So now since we're not passing in any arguments, it's going to default it to zero because we're not passing in anything. And to make that more obvious, we're just going to type in Python main.py and we're going to tap in enter. So the value is going to be set to zero as the default. Without this, we're going to get an error because it's not going to know what values to look for. But as you could see right now, if we run the program and we don't insert anything, it's going to give us zero as a default. But let's look at the more interesting aspect, which is counting the occurrences of the verbose variable in this script. So here we'll just type in Python main.py. We want to square the number of two and here we'll add a V. So it's going to give us the verbose description of that calculation. But if we add two V's, we're going to get an even more verbose description of what we just created. As you can see, two to the power of two is four. And we can add as many Vs as we want. And as you can see, if it's not one or two, it's going to default to the else statement. So you can add as many if else conditions as you want, depending on how verbose you want it to be. And it's just cool because you can really change up your program in a cool way. And this can also be called like this. You can say double dash verbose, double dash verbose, and it will act the same way as adding the two double Vs. We've now covered a lot of the basic functionality that's required to use argpars. So let's create our very first simple command line interface. So to get started, we need to create a parser as always, and that's going to be an argument parser. Then let's add some parser arguments. So here we'll type in parser dot add argument. And the first one is going to be a going to be of type integer and we're going to provide some help that tells the program that this is the base value and we're still going to square the numbers or we're going to create the functionality that allows the user to create a calculation based on two numbers the base number and the exponent and we're going to give the user the result in many different ways then we will duplicate this we'll say b which is of type int as well and we're going to call this the exponent and finally, let's add a positional argument. So parser add argument, and we're just going to add the verbose argument again. So here we got verbose and the long version. And we're going to have an action which is going to be set to count. And finally, we're going to give it a help message so the user will understand what it does. So the message will say provides a verbose description, use double V for extra verbose. Now, just as from earlier, we're going to create the namespace for these arguments and we're going to type in parser.parseargs. Then we're going to get the result of type integer, which is going to equal args a to the power of args b. For the fun of it, I'm going to use match in this case. So match args verbose. And I know it's for pattern matching, but sometimes it's fun to use it instead of if else. So here we'll type in case one and we're going to print the formatted string of the result is result case two and this one is actually really annoying to type so i'll just paste it in we're going to print that args a to the power of args b is equal to the result and every other case is going to be just printing the result and before we run this, I also want to show you another cool thing you can do, and that is adding a usage message. So here you can type in parser.usage, and you can add a string that defines how you should use this program. So here we can type in use it like this. And that message really sucks. I really don't recommend you do something like that. But now if we clear this and we run our program, we say python main.py, and we type in dash h, 
At the top, you're going to have a usage message that says, use it like this. It's going to give you, and then it will give you all of the useful information that you're used to seeing. If you decide to exclude this, it will give you a default one. So let's go back and run this one more time. And the default one is just going to look like this, which is kind of hard to read, but at the moment it's much more descriptive than what I just created. So that's just a neat feature you should be aware of in case you want to make it more descriptive. But let's see how we can actually run this. So let's make some space. And here we'll type in Python main.py and we'll add two and five. And if we run it, we'll get 32 back. Now we can do two and five, and we can also mention the verbose flag. And it will give us the result is 32. We can even make it extra verbose. All right, let's do a double verbose. And it will give us the double verbose option. And that's going to be the first command line interface that we've created successfully. But there's one more thing I'm going to show you in this lesson so that you can really get a good start with command line interfaces. And that is how to deal with conflicting arguments. Because maybe you'll have an option that says verbose, but you might also have an option that says silence. So of course, one of these options is going to do the exact opposite. And I'm just going to paste it in like this. So as you can see right here, we have an argument that silence is the program. We provided the silence variable. The action is going to store a flag. And here it's going to help us generate a silent version of the output, which is the exact opposite of the verbose option. So if you display both of these, it's usually an issue. And if we actually specify both of these right now, it's going to run because we didn't tell the program that both of these should not be put together. So what we're going to do is go next to the parser up here and we're going to create a group. And the group is going to be parser.add mutually exclusive group. So the way this works is that instead of typing parser, we're now going to type in group because this is going to belong to a group. And what this tells the program is that only one of these options should be run at one given moment. So let's try to run this right now. And if we type in main.py and we do dash H, you'll see it's going to give us some more options. But if we scroll up here, we're now going to have the two options inside a list with a pipeline, denoting that we can only pick one of them when we are running the program. So let's go back to the bottom, clear all of this. If we type in now main.py to 5v and we also type in silence, it's going to say silence is not allowed with argument dash v, verbose. But now we can do something such as dash s and the program will work perfectly fine. So in case you need to avoid two arguments being used together, do create a exclusive group for them so that you can avoid silly mistakes such as that one. And we're not really using that silence variable. So if you did want to use it, you'd have to type in args.silence. So if args.silence is true, we're going to print silenced. Else we're going to do what we usually do. And we're going to try to print the verbose option. So now if we run this one more time, you'll see that if we silence it, it's going to say silenced. It's not going to give us an output, but if we add the verbose flag, it's going to print the verbose version. But anyways, that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's lesson. I know this was quite a lot to grasp. I am going to leave a link to the documentation in the description box down below, because I actually grabbed all of this from the Python docs and changed it just slightly so that I could explain it a bit more easily. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.